You know, sensors are everywhere, bringing real-world measurements from near and far to central decision points for analysis and action. But out here in the country, wireless network coverage can be awfully thin. And sometimes you don't even have power available, and that means sensor nodes have to rely on battery power. But just because you have to rely on long-range radios and batteries, that doesn't mean you have to compromise security. Well, today we're going to show you one solution based around the DS28S60 Secure Authenticator with Chip DNA Puff technology. Let's go inside and I'll tell you all about it. Data starts with a sensor, and in our case, it begins with a sensor board. Now, for this demonstration, we're measuring temperature with a DS7505 temperature sensor that converts its temperature reading to digital and transmits its data using an I2C connection to a microcontroller. Now, that microcontroller is a MAX32660. It's a tiny, low-power microcontroller based on an ARM Cortex-M4 CPU core. Hey, don't let its size, just 1.6 millimeters on a side in the WLP package, fool you. This thing has 256 kilobytes of flash, 96 kilobytes of RAM, and lots of peripherals. It is perfect for managing a sensor node like this. But the one thing it doesn't have is security. It has no way to encrypt data, no authentication engine, and no secure storage for sensitive encryption keys. That's why we included a DS28S60 cryptographic coprocessor. It has all these functions and so much more. For communication, we include a MAC 66242 NFC Secure Authenticator. It manages communication and authentication of the NFC connection. And a LoRa radio. That's a long-range radio system that uses a type of spread spectrum communication to move traffic over long distances, typically at UHF frequencies. Now, here's the thing about LoRa. In devices, don't typically just talk to a base station. Often, LoRa in devices talk to a gateway device that acts as a kind of a bridge to a much larger data network. A network server then routes network packets to an application server where the work is actually performed. The bottom line is that this sensor node, as long as it's in range of the gateway, can send packets to an application server located anywhere on the internet. All right, back to the sensor node itself. Now, because the MAX32660 is pretty small, it's a little pin limited, and that's why we included a MAX7322 IO port expander to give us just a little more room. And there's a MAX8888 LDO regulator handling the power chores. So here's what we have, a sensor node with a long range radio that ultimately passes data to an application server on the internet. Let me rephrase that. We have a sensor node generating potentially critical private data and passing it to a server somewhere, I'm not sure where, on the internet. So what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, of course, you know what could go wrong. Unsecured private information on the internet doesn't stay private for very long. And that's why we put security in place. Now, LoRa has security. The LoRa network architecture defines an encryption envelope between the LoRa end device and the network server, and a second encryption envelope between the LoRa end device and the LoRa application server. Hey, it's good encryption too. AES-128 on both of LoRa's encryption envelopes. So great. Why not just rely on the security models that are already built into LoRa? Well, there are actually several reasons that might not be the best idea. First, you're tying your security plan to a particular transport technology. Hey, communication technologies change, and your security plans need to be independent of the underlying transport. Second, that sensor node looks like a mighty weak spot. If the encryption keys assigned to the sensor node aren't properly protected, some bad guy could exfiltrate those keys and decrypt intercepted communications. Hey, it's better to keep critical encryption keys in a secure store, not in some general purpose micro. Now, the third reason LoRa-based security might not be enough is to recognize that the LoRa application server might not be the last leg of the journey for the data. Now, 
In our case, the LoRa application server passes data to a secondary server that stores the data from the sensor nodes so that the web server can report the data. The data transfer from the LoRa application server to our secondary server falls outside the LoRa encryption envelope. Now, finally, consider that frequently the LoRa application key is hard coded at the factory. Now, that's always a bad idea, particularly if the key is created algorithmically. Hey, it's better to stick with a tried and true key agreement mechanism. Now, that's why it makes sense to reliably encrypt the data just as soon as it's created and keep it encrypted until it's actually needed. And that's what the DS28S60 does. Before the data ever goes to the LoRa radio, it gets encrypted. Now, of course, somehow or another, we have to share the keys with the cloud server so that it can decrypt the data. Okay, let's take a look at the big picture. Here's the sensor node. It communicates with a LoRa gateway that's connected to the cloud, and somewhere in the cloud, there's an application server. And we want, to, want the sensor to securely send data to the application server. But to make that happen, the server and the, and the sensor node have to agree on a set of encryption keys. How can we make that happen? Hey, if only we could bring the sensor node and the server together in the same place, we could be sure that we're sharing keys with the correct device. Well, we can do the next best thing. We can use near-field communication to connect the sensor node to the server using an internet-connected device like a tablet or a smartphone with NFC built in. Now, the big advantage to near-field is it requires the devices to be close to each other for communication to take place. And we use that property to provision the sensor node. The Android tablet acts as a kind of a bridge between the sensor node and the cloud-based server. And once the node has been provisioned, it can send encrypted data to the server in the cloud over LoRa. Now, here's how it works. On the tablet, I'm running some software that Maxim created to do the provisioning step. When I bring the tablet close to the sensor node, you can see a message pop up in the monitor window, NFC tag validated. Now, all that means is that the NFC chip on the sensor has responded correctly to the NFC receiver in the tablet. So far, the sensor node has done nothing with a DS28S60 cryptographic coprocessor, and we can verify that by asking the application to authenticate the node. Now, when we approach the sensor, we can see that the tag is valid, but it can't be authenticated, and that's because the tag hasn't yet been provisioned. That is, it's negotiated no certificate nor keys with the cloud-based server. But we're about to fix that. We're going to select Node Provision from the menu on the tablet. Now, when I bring the tablet close to the tag, we'll see a, a flurry of activity. Now, the important thing are these last two lines, Node Successfully Provisioned. What just happened? Well, truth be told, quite a lot happened. First, the NFC chip is now in pass-through mode. Data from the tablet is passed directly to the microcontroller. The tablet sent a command to the DS28S60 to create an ECDSA key pair. Then it read back the public key component that was just created. Next, the tablet gets in touch with the server. It sends the node ID and the public key that was just generated and it gets back a certificate. The certificate is basically the public key of the sensor board signed using the private key of the server. Now, if the sensor board wants to share its public key with another party, they can be sure it's authentic by verifying the certificate with the cloud server's public key. The cloud server also provides its public key to the sensor node. Next, the sensor node and the cloud server, using the tablet as an intermediary, perform a little dance of technology called elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. Now, the idea is to create a common key without letting some eavesdropper learn the value of the key. And when all this is done, the sensor node and the cloud server know each other's public key, and they know a common secret that they can use as a key for a symmetric crypto algorithm that will secure the data that moves over the LoRa connection. 
Oh, one more thing. The cloud sends down a set of LoRa keys. Now, these are the keys that the LoRa radio subsystem uses for its encryption layer. See, without these keys, the sensor node can't talk through the LoRa gateway. Now, at this point, the node has been provisioned. We won't be using the NFC features of the tablet again, and in fact, we can just set the tablet aside. The sensor and the cloud server now share all the data they need to communicate, and the sensor node has the cryptographic keys it needs to secure its LoRa connection. Now I'm going to go to the website for our cloud server. I know that the node ID for this sensor ends in the value 08CE hex, so I'm going to search for that. Now, as you can see, I've already received quite a few entries. Yes, I have been playing around with this for a while now. Let's make a note of that number, and we'll check it again later on. And meanwhile, I need to find a place to put the sensor. All right, so I have the sensor node and a battery pack up here, and we're going to see how far this can reach. My security light's about 200 feet from the base station, so let's just put it here, and it will require about 10 minutes or so to accumulate a few samples, just enough time for a cup of coffee. Okay, it's been a few minutes. Let's see if the cloud server has accumulated any more readings from this node. And yes, we see that the number of records has increased. Now that means the sensor is sending encrypted messages over LoRa. The gateway is passing those encrypted messages up to the cloud server. And the cloud server is decrypting them successfully. And we know that the messages are secure because the DS28S60 cryptographic coprocessor is there to encrypt them. Hey, the same technology that's protecting these temperature readings is available to protect your most sensitive data from hackers and thieves. Just go to this website for more information about the DS28S60. There, you'll find all the information about the device and a link to the evaluation kit. The DS28S60 cryptographic coprocessor, because protecting your data has never been more important.